Hi, and welcome back to the Vagrant from Scratch course. In this video, we're going to explore Vagrant virtual machine images, commonly known as boxes. Let's get started. Let's start from scratch in an empty directory. Make sure that there are no spaces in the path to the directory. You can see here that I've chosen to avoid spaces by using dashes in the directory name. This is just to avoid annoying errors which sometimes creep up on you if your path has any spaces. From here, issue the command vagrant init bento slash ubuntu-16.04. Let's understand exactly what this command does. If we take a directory listing, we can see that a file named vagrant file with a capital V has been placed in the directory. The vagrant file contains the configuration for the virtual machine environment that you want vagrant to provision and manage. If we open up the vagrant file in a text editor, we can see that the value of the variable config.vm.box is equal to bento slash ubuntu-16.04. So all that the vagrant init command does is create the default vagrant file, place it in the current directory, and set the box specified in the default configuration file to be whatever you specified at the command line, which for us was bento slash ubuntu-16.04. Now the vagrant file itself is a Ruby file. Ruby is a programming language which my editor, Emacs, understands. So the text has syntax highlighting. In Ruby, the hash character is used to begin a comment. And so all of the lines you can see which start with a hash are just comments for us, which will actually be completely ignored by vagrant. In the default vagrant file, almost everything is either a comment or code which has been commented out. In fact, for the default configuration file, every single option which you can configure is commented out except for the box which you have to choose. This is our bare minimum vagrant configuration file for the bento ubuntu-16.04 box. In future videos on the course, we'll cover the vagrant file in depth, including covering all of the options shown in the default configuration file which are commented out. For now though, we're only going to focus on the part of the vagrant file which defines the box. As is written in the comments of the vagrant file, every vagrant development environment requires a box. Boxes are the package format for vagrant environments. You can think of them as virtual machine images. The easiest way for you to understand boxes is to take a look at the publicly available catalogue of vagrant boxes at vagrantcloud.com slash search. The catalog is made up of users, and each user can upload their own customized boxes. Boxes are uniquely identified by the name of the user, followed by a slash, and then the name of the box. For example, the first box shown here was uploaded by the user Ubuntu, and they named it Trusty64. Some companies and projects provide official vagrant boxes, which they produce and endorse for their products. For example, the first box shown is an official Ubuntu box, and the second is an official Laravel box. It is up to the user who creates the box to decide which providers their box will support. In our case, in this course, we're using VirtualBox as our provider, and pretty much everyone supports VirtualBox. But if you were using VMware, for example, you could not use the Ubuntu boxes because they do not support VMware as a provider. If you remember, the box we specified to use in the Vagrant file is bento slash ubuntu-16.04. That means that the box is produced by a user named bento. Let's search for that user. From the search results, we can see that the bento user produces countless boxes for multiple operating system versions, and for multiple providers. Let's click on the box which we chose, the ubuntu-16.04 one. You can see that the text needed to be added in the vagrant file to use the box is the same as the text we have in our vagrant file. The page also highlights the versions of the box which have been published. The current version is labelled 2017.10.25.0. Versioning is supported so that members of your team using Vagrant can update their underlying boxes easily, and the people who create boxes can push fixes. If we scroll down, we can see previous versions of the box which the Bento user has released, and which providers each version of the box supports. Now that you've understood what a box is, you're probably asking yourself, why are we using the boxes provided by this Bento user? Who is this person? And why would we use the Ubuntu box from the Bento user rather than the official one from Ubuntu? Let's click on the name to see the profile of the user. 
Here you can see that the Bento user is actually used to upload boxes produced by the Bento project, and the Bento project covers many many operating systems. To understand more, let's consult the Vagrant documentation page on boxes. At the bottom of the page, we can see that HashiCorp, the creators of Vagrant, only officially recommend two box sets, those produced by HashiCorp themselves, or the Bento boxes. In general, the Bento boxes are well used, tested, and follow default Vagrant conventions. They are trusted by HashiCorp, so they are the ones which you should use by default. Other boxes may also exist, even by some users which represent certain projects officially, but the Bento boxes are most likely to conform to the Vagrant conventions, so it is best to stick to them unless you have a reason not to. You can run commands specific to Vagrant boxes by using the Vagrant box prefix followed by a subcommand. Let's run the command Vagrant box dash dash help and see what subcommands are available to us. I've given a small description of all of the available subcommands here for those people who are interested to read, but for now, we are only going to concern ourselves with three of these commands add, list, and remove. You run the vagrant box list command to see the boxes which you have available on your local machine. You can see from the output that the only box I have available on my local machine is the Ubuntu 16.04 Bento box. You run the add subcommand when you want to add a vagrant box to your local store manually. Usually, adding boxes to your local store would be an automatic process which takes place when you're bringing up a new Vagrant environment, but this command is here in case you want to do it manually. Let's add a CentOS box to our local store by running the command Vagrant box add bento slash CentOS dash 7.3. When prompted to choose a provider, choose 2, because that is VirtualBox, which is the provider that we're using for this course. Now that we've added another box to our local store, we can see it appear when we run the vagrant box list command again. Let's remove the CentOS box we just added by running the command vagrant box remove bento slash CentOS dash 7.3. The remove subcommand comes in handy when your machine's hard drive space is limited, as you could use it to get rid of any of the boxes which you no longer use. You now understand all about Vagrant boxes and how you can find them on the public Vagrant box catalogue. You also know to go with the default Bento boxes unless there is a valid reason to choose another one. To carry on learning even more about Vagrant, watch the next video in the course. Be sure to subscribe and even check out some of the other videos available on my channel.